through my former student Elaine Walker that I started to know a lot more about Heinz Bolin. And I got to meet him, and we all got to see in him yesterday this really wonderful and generous uh, a man who's just excited about people using his discovery and, and you know, and celebrating that with us. And that was a bit of the spirit of John Pierce too. I mean, if I could somehow bring him here through some of this music or some of my knowing him well, it's just like this was such a nurturer and such a, a, a warm uh, individual. It was always like so excited about anyone's work and could you do this and you would write, oh, this is so wonderful. Unbelievable. And, you know, John is really kind of the grandfather of computer music for all of us, right? He was Max's boss at Bell Labs, and he protected Max's work so that Max could develop the software synthesis languages that have led to many of the tools we use, but that especially led to C-Sound, which is one of the main tools that I use in team. Now, today I'll show you a little launch pad, I'll play you a little music, but I'll also show you we've built some new beautiful instruments in C-Sound. And uh, recently, the most recent release of C-Sound has built into it, it comes with the language, a beautiful Bowen Pierce tuning system and library of instruments. So all of you are able to explore that tuning, all the modes, very easily. So if you just download and install C-Sound, it works, you're playing Bowen Pierce instantly with any MIDI keyboard. So I'm going to show you that for a second too. So a little bit of a nice new set of utilities for you, so you can all start much more easily playing, enjoying, listening to, and composing in Bowen Pierce for free. C-Sound is free, just download and use it. And then some things that help us maybe understand the modes a little bit. And then a little bit of my music. That's uh, where we're going. Let me show you a taste of my Nogno geometry. It was so nice last night when Clarence Barlow gave his talk and he played that blues piece of his that he had premiered at John Pierce's 80th. And I was at John Pierce's 80th too, his birthday at Northwestern. My son Philip now goes to Northwestern. Um, and it was really a, a wonderful occasion. I got to play that. But I must, I'll tell you the sad story of that. Um, I think um, Schroeder was there, who was the famous Schroeder reverb uh, uh, person from Bell Labs, a colleague of theirs. And I had played I Know of No Geometry, and I don't know if he had ever seen much radio baton even, but at the end of the performance, he was pretty angry with me. Uh, he didn't enjoy it all. What were you doing? Or, so maybe even you were wondering, what was I doing? Um, the radio baton, <laughs> you know, these two wireless transmitters, this is a giant FM antenna, I'm able to send beats when I cross an invisible threshold, I'm able to do expression and control timbres, and that's a lot of what's going on in my instrument. I dreamed that I would have a way of playing with sound and playing sounds when, in 1979, and then Max Matthews created a way that I could do this, this radio baton, which I love uh, very much. So let me show you a taste of geometry. Geometry is the piece that I played at, at John Pierce's 80th. We'll just jump to the fifth.
little more of that tonight, but you get the idea now, out of tune, not tonal, consonant, rough, dissonant, fuzzy, funny chords, no, not that sort. Um, and um, it's just this beautiful set of colors. And, um, I don't know if I was using too many square waves in there either. I don't know that the idea of square waves is that important to the Bowl and Pierce scale. It might be interesting that uh, mathematically there are ratios here and there that seem to suggest. Um, you do have to make the right timbres. Uh, and the timbres matter a great deal depending on the kind of roughness maybe in the sound. I did find, and Curtis Rhodes sort of explained this earlier too, when he said it took him a month to kind of uh, get the sound right. No kidding. It took me a long time to tune my brain and my head and everything. And, and part of that, I'm sad to say, was because I studied and read Max's articles. And, you know, they're telling me, well, the scale's going to rotate around here, and it's going to be the same octave, and this is a consonant, this is a tonic, and this is the dominant. It doesn't sound like the dominant. It doesn't sound like a dominant. It doesn't sound like the tonic. It doesn't sound like the most consonant triad at all. And so I was trying to be true to these guys, you know, okay, <laughs> no, not in my head, not to my ears, not to that. It took a long time, and also I was much younger, right, and, and, and these guys were, I wasn't such a friend, I was making friends, and so it was like, oh, how about, uh, we're sure that would be wonderful, compose a piece. Well, I wanted to make sure I followed the gospel, you know, I did it right, and, and, and that I, you know, and so... Um, uh, when finally you just started listening, started simplifying, started listening to the harmonies and playing over them, well, okay, then you see there's this beautiful new world. And so I'm sure, and we have heard, and we will hear even more about how these ratios do this and do all of that. And um, no, these chords do all this. These chords open up your heart and these chords reach you and touch you and tickle you and, and, and make you remember in funny ways. And that's what uh, finally started to happen with me and the tuning. Let me jump to the C sound instrument so that all of you can sort of see and believe that a little bit. Um, so here's this uh, nice new collection for you now in C sound. And of course I went back to Jean-Claude Rizet's instruments and John Chowning's instruments, which I have C sound versions of. I even have an almost David Wessel early instrument, although he's not a C sound guy. But I went to this lecture when I was also very young, and he was showing these timbres that would like alternate, and he was doing this stuff, and it was so beautiful to just hear the colors. Everything he does is beautiful. But he was doing this color oscillating timbre alternating thing, and it was just so amazing. And so I have this C sound instrument where every time you play a note, it sort of just alternates different timbres and, and does a kind of tam random timbreization. And so I have a little mm -hmm. like David Wessel instrument too, in a way. What? When you before, how many? I'm just curious as to what synthesis. Oh, that was C sound. Some, some was my TG77 okay. and my old instrument. Okay. So the Pierce piece was C sound. I'm using C sound, and it's true that some of them are very pure, equal temper tunings, and some of them are average tunings. And but all real time part is handled by C sound. Yep, yep, yep. And we'll see that now in a second. <laughs> 